I'm CK. Today we've got another one from Synthrotech. It's their Astro Noise unit, which is a retro classic noisemaker reminiscent of video game noises with some modifications that you can do to them all, some interesting stuff probably going on. We'll put it together, see how it sounds, and I hope you enjoy the video. Here's the bag. I picked this up from Amazon. It's got typically what you'd see is packed May 17th, 2023, so it's relatively recent. AH inspected it, so if we're missing any parts, we're going to give AH a call. Nothing particularly different about the inside of that. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the circuit boards, more than one, and front panel out. Let's take a look at the front panel first, because it reveals many, front panels reveal many things. I'll get back the top camera off a little bit more. Okay. So this area is translucent. So there will be a light show behind it, I can tell. Rate, tone, decay. Uh, let me look at the, I'm going to look at the front panel circuit board at the same time as we're looking at the front panel, because this will give us a little more clue to what's going on. So there's a bunch of, looks like square LEDs. Is, uh, that are not surface mount, which is interesting. Then rate is a potentiometer. Then we've got tone, oscillator on off, those are two switches. Decay pot, LFO1 pot, LFO2, LFO, I mean LFO level and LFO2. And then here we have some jacks for trigger rate CV and out. So there's no input, it just generates its own sound. There's no other CV coming in except for rate, which is fine, but that's what's in that bag. Let's look at the main logic circuit board. If we can get it out of the bag. There we go. I'm looking at the volume on my top cam on my overhead camera. And it's like it's picking up some background noise. I'm not hearing it. Uh, let's see what we got. We've got nothing on the back except this. We've got the pin headers which will go on the back, so I believe, yeah, we're going to sandwich the boards like that. All through hole plated, of course. We've come to expect that for modern Euro rack. Voltage regulator here. Transistor here, little diode, probably a 4148 there. Capacitors, none of the values are listed for the components. Ah, there's some stand-up resistors there. Boo, stand-up resistors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if I counted that right. Two, four, six, seven, yep. Uh, I see some more resistors. There's a bunch of resistors. Looks pretty straightforward. Nothing too unusual. Things are packed a little closer together, which is why they went with the stand-up resistors, I'm pretty sure. And now we've got some pieces of paper with a parts list. So we've got the LM13700 and the LM3914 as our ICs bunch of electrolytic capacitors, some disc caps, they're all 104s, so I think they're decoupling for the chips. And it's got an asterisk saying, recommend done last, oh, on the electrolytics. Okay. Then we've got resistors all stand up, as he says right here. Again, as he says right here, I'm not a huge fan of stand up resistors. I'm also not a huge fan of using a printer that doesn't print colors very well to do resistors. But that's just a 
bias on my part. And we've got our LEDs, pin headers, jacks, switches, pots. Oh, and then some more things. Oh, it's got a 555 timer in it to, uh, to be the oscillator, I'm pretty sure. 74HC86, 164, uh, counter CD4093, and an op amp. And then we've got another page full of stuff. It's got more resistors, a shrouded connector, we'll see. I hope it's packed with one, but I can't guarantee it. Then we've got a trimmer pot. I don't know what that'll be for, because this doesn't feel like something that needs a lot of calibration. We've got a spaceship knob, because it's all video gamey. And that's about it. So let's look at the actual parts themselves. We've got... Let us know if everything's okay, or if anything's wrong, which is always nice. Ah, good. Yes, see, this is the way you... Sh this is the way you ought to should do it. Synthrotech and uh, Division 6 do this. And let me get it out of here so you can see what I'm enthused about. See, here's all the parts. And instead of being in individual plastic bags or something like that, they're captured in uh, some painter's tape, seven-day tape, whatever you want to call it, masking tape, and you can just take them out as you go. In fact, they probably are in assembly order, but that doesn't really matter in this case because I'm going to have to go by uh, the numbers listed here just because. But I really like this. This is a lot less waste. Things are pretty well organized, and it looks neat, too. And we've got another... Oh, here we have all the rectangular LEDs. I am going to pull one of these out and put it on my LED buddy, if I can find it. I used it just the other, just yesterday, and I put it down somewhere, and I don't know where I put it. Where could I have put that? Well, failing having my LED buddy handy, I'm going to light one of these LEDs up with uh, my meter which you too can do at home. Just go into continuity mode, then touch the negative, lead, a negative probe to the short leg and the positive probe to the long leg. And as you can see there, it lights it up. I hope you can see that. That's an orange one. This one is another orange one. Huh. I wonder if they're all orange or not. Let's see what the bill of materials says. Now we've got yellow, orange, red, and blue. So I'm probably going to have to test each of these in turn to see what colors they are. Which is not a big deal. In fact, I would kind of bet that it doesn't matter what colors you put where. It's just for dramatic effect anyway. So there's some screws and spacers. Let me get another parts bin. And pour this other stuff out. Here we've got, looks like we've got the sockets in here, I believe. Yeah, here are the IC sockets. Here are the ICs themselves with some sockets. So, okay, it's ICs plus sockets in here. And I can already see some pins are bent. We'll have to do some dressing up on that as we go along. Power cable. Uh, 500 ohm potentiometer, two of them. That's a hundred ohm, 
k I mean 100 k ohm, 500 k ohm, and another 100 k, and then we should have. Oh, interesting. And this is a 220 k. Okay. And we've got our trimmer switches. Here's the little fancy spaceship knob they were talking about. I'm sure this is some protective film over it that we'll take off once we've got it together. And I'm going to assume this is going to go on the... Uh, which pot? That'll probably go on the... We'll just pick one for right now for demonstration purposes. Actually not, because this has got a flat spot on it. Uh, it's got a flat spot in the hole, so it's going to go up on this one. This one's got is, is flat spotted too. So I'll go on there like that. Okay, you don't need my sound effects. So that's what's in the bag. We'll get the soldering iron heated up and start putting this thing together. They do have a build guide on their website, but the build guide is for the original standalone unit, not for the Eurorack version, but doesn't matter. We'll just go ahead and put things on following the build guide. Now, typically I do, as you know if you've seen the channel before, I do resistors first, but since these are all stand-up resistors, I'm not going to. I'm going to do the IC sockets and many of the other components before I do the resistors, and I'll do all the resistors in one big resistor time party. So we got here again, we've got the sockets and ICs inside the pink anti static foam. And these are the ZLM 13700 and the LM3914. Let's look those up real quick. So the LM13700 is a dual transductance amplifier with linearizing diodes and buffers. And the LM3914 Oh, okay, so the LM3914 is uh, a circuit that senses analog voltage levels and drives 10 LEDs. So this little circle of LEDs behind the translucence on the front panel will be driven by the voltage inputs coming into this chip for tone or whatever. But first thing we're going to do is put the sockets on. And again, I want to check these because I noticed some bent pins as I was doing the intro or what's in the bag section. So we'll put this socket on. I'm resting it on my pinky finger behind the board. I'm looking up at the camera to make sure I'm in frame. And I am. And we will do one pin. And as you can see, because you saw me jump around, it's not flat, it's not correctly on the board. So we're just going to heat that one pin up again and press with our index finger and it flattens it all out. Very simple. Now, of course, you have to be careful when you're doing this. There's a bent pin. When you're doing this, that you, number one, get the notches in the right place. And number two, since there's a variety of chips on this board of different pin widths. You got to make sure you get the right socket in the one that has the pins for that. You can't put one that has too many pins in a too few pin socket, but you can do the reverse. And then you can get very grumpy with yourself when you say, oh gosh darn it, I put a short socket where a long socket goes, because then you have to desolder sockets from through-hole plated boards, which is not an easy task. And the reason, the primary reason why I got a rework heat gun 
which is what I recommend for that kind of activity. And you can see the one I got. I got it for $26 from Amazon US, and it's very capable for that. So there's a video on my channel of me using it, and you can take a look at it and then go buy one if you want, if you need a hot again. Gosh, there's some seriously bent pins here. So whatever the plastic, pink plastic foam was supposed to do to protect them, it did not really protect them in this instance. And yes, I know some of you may be saying, you know, instead of the sockets, you could have done the diodes first, because they are the lowest part. You're right. Oops. Do you see how I just flinched and it came all the way out? Uh, yeah, I could have done the diodes first, but I didn't want to. Because I actually want to, uh, because they're in that strip of painter's tape, I want to approach that all at once so I don't have some stuff out and some stuff floating around loose. There's one bent pin there. I can fix it like that. There we go. Again, double checking pin count and saying, why are you falling off my finger, you silly thing? So, and if you're going to do that, I'm just going to set you down. I don't know why I wasn't setting it down before. Oh, I know why, because it wasn't. I only had one socket. And it wouldn't balance on just one socket. Let me take these all out so I don't have to keep coming back. Now I'll solder all those pins. And I'll do that in fast motion and probably, actually, I'll turn off the camera just for while I do these pins because we don't need to actually see that. Okay, now I'm going to do the diodes, the 4148s, and pull them out of the paper tape. see how they fit, how close to the body we have to put the bend the leads. Looks like we can go right up against the body directly, which is A-OK -okay with me. And looking at the, there's the white stripe indicating where the black stripe on the 4148s goes. I think I might not have bent it in enough. No, I did. I bent it in just perfectly. So put all these on. That's all the diodes on. I think I will do the trimmer right now because it's in the midst of this cluster of sockets. And I think I'll do these two caps. Actually, there's three caps in here. So I'll do this little cluster of caps and resistors. Yeah, I'm going. Uh, very much off the board in assembly planning here, but uh, I want to because of the way this, uh, because of all the stand-up resistors. Stand-up resistors just throw everything into a cocked hat for me. So we've got C12, which is a 100 microfarad electrolytic, and he says recommended done last. I don't know why he would recommend that. Because there's one at C12 and there's one up at here at C1. Well, I guess I will abide by his suggestions. I have no reason not to abide by his suggestion. And these C13 and C5, uh, I mean C12 and 
I mean, I'm, I was right the first time. C13 and C5, you also recommend you do last. Huh. I don't understand why. But I don't need to. So instead, we'll do all the 104s. The decoupling caps for all these ICs, and there are a bunch of ICs. I think these are all 104s. They better all be 104s. I think the only disc caps he has are 104s. This one's not marked. Oh, yes, it is. And by the way, when I say he, I use that as generic to indicate a person, not a gender. I just don't find using there to be effective because it feels almost like I'm using a plural when I want to use a singular. So that's all the 104s and their decoupling caps to manage the power, smooth the power, clean up the power uh, going to the ICs. So we will be looking around all the ICs to see where they go and we should be able to find them right close to them all the time. And we'll start with C3. right next to the 555 timer. C4, and etc, etc. I'll speed this up. I believe they gave us one extra 104, which goes in the spare parts bin. I've done, geez, 100 Eurorack modules in the last year or so. <clears throat> and with the spare parts that have been included in kits, I could probably build a complete new Eurorack module. And that's all of the decoupling caps. Let's see what we're going to do next. Again, I'm delaying everything. I'm delaying all the resistors, so I'm kind of hopping around. I think we'll do the voltage regulator and the two... transistors. Because then I'm going to do all the electrolytics after I put the stand-up resistors on. Because they're all, they're all pretty much, well, we've got a bunch of these short ones. But I'll do the electrolytics after the stand-up resistors. I know I'm going back and forth on stuff. And you probably don't care what I'm talking about there. Did I solder? I didn't solder that silly trimmer. I'm making an assumption. No, that's not a good assumption. Never mind. I was going to make an assumption, but I won't. Because this trimmer feeds this, which is the U6, U6. Oops. U6, which is the op amp. Uh, that's interesting. I thought it would be trimming something else. But it's not. Huh. Well, that's just interesting. So next, as I said, I was, I'll do what I was going to do. I'm going to put the voltage regulators, voltage regulator and the two transistors on the board. And again, they do look identical, but they are definitely not identical. Let's see what we've got here. 
we've got an L78L05, uh, that will be the voltage regulator to regulate to 5 volts, and we've got a 109P30 and a 3906, so I don't know which one of those will go in which of the transistor spots, so let me find it on the magic piece of paper. So the J109 goes in Q1, and that's this, and that will go here. And the 3906 will go in Q2, way down here, making sure we've got the flat spot on the transistor, matching the flat spot on the circuit board. And now we'll put the voltage regulator in. I'm going to go solder these down. And as I often say when I do transistors, a long time ago, somebody said, do the middle leg on the transistor first, and you're less likely to bridge when you're doing the other two legs. I don't know whether that's true or not, but I've done it ever since, because I see no reason not to, and I haven't had a problem, so maybe it is good. Now, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to put this pin header at a minimum on right now because, as you can see, the line of uh, solder points for that is right behind all these stand-up resistors. So if I do that after the stand-up resistors, I will be doing contortions with my soldering iron to try and get things correct. I'm going to see if I can make a little make a little table out of this so I can get them all started at the same time. Both of them. Oops. I've got one more which I can kind of slide over here. Put it underneath, and slide it back. Try and get these guys all lined up. They're not lining up right. That was a futile attempt to do something clever, but I'm not that clever. So, just like with the sockets, we'll do one pin at a time. it up, look at it. That one's flat, that one's flat. This one, actually it looks pretty flat. Huh. I actually did it right. But, oh, just because we're kind of doing somewhat scattershot tonight, I think I'll put the other pin headers on to the pots and knobs board and get that done at the same time just so I can make sure this is all mated properly. In fact, I will do the drop them together kind of thing where they're held in place by the other pin header so we know they will mate again later on. So I'll pull these back apart now that we've got the pin headers all aligned correctly with each other. Oh, by the way, I also found my LED buddy. So I can do the right thing when we, it comes to sorting out all these LEDs. 
Now, let's see what we're going to do. Now, we may as well attack all the resistors. So first thing I'm going to do, they generally try to group these up pretty well in the tape. We like that. So there's some 22s. 220s actually, 220s. So we'll sort these all out. And we've got a whole bunch of these. I didn't put them all in the tape in the same order, which is can be a little confusing. So just make sure you're getting like with like, of course. And a bunch of singleton values. Okay, so let's attack things in terms of number of components. So I like to do the most to the least. And we'll start off with these, what, two, four, six, seven, one Ks. Make sure that that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, that's correct. And so we're going to be doing stand-up resistors. So what we do, let me I'll zoom in a little bit more for this. We take the lead and instead of bending it at a 90 degree angle, we take one lead and go a full 180. So it looks kind of like that. And this is a 1K, so it'll go in R10. And I'm trying to find R10, there it is. Now, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but for stand-up resistors, the two holes are very close to each other. One hole has a circle around it where the body of the resistor goes, and it's got a little line pointing to the hole where the other lead goes. So you shouldn't have any confusion as to which solder hole gets the body in which gets the lead. So now we've got about 20, 25 resistors to do and there's not much to say beyond what I just did. So I will put the video in fast playback and mute the audio so you can enjoy resistor time. That's the end of resistor time for this kit. And as you can see, we've got all the resistors all standing up in their places. Now, while I was off camera, I also organized the LEDs into yellow, orange, red, and blue because I found my LED buddy again. He was just under a pile of stuff. So we can see that this is a blue one, orange one, and so on. So I'm going to do those now, just because I feel like it. And then I'll go back and do the final electrolytic capacitors on the main board. So we'll do yellow first, D1, D2, D3, and D4. Yellow is here, and there's good clear indication, D1, of which side is the positive, D2, D3, and D so what I'm going to be doing 
to make sure these do it. My water heater is going to come on in a minute. I can hear it clicking as it prepares and then it'll get noisy. Okay, there it goes. So I'm going to put all these on and what I'm going to do for each of them is I'm going to solder one leg and then just like with sockets I'm going to go around to the front push on it to make sure they're all level and nice. Even though they don't have to be precise. I keep this. I keep that. I'm not letting that one cool. Okay, now it's cool. They don't have to be precise because they're going to be behind that translucency, so it won't make much difference if they're a little off. So that's what I'll be doing while the water heater's going through its cycle. So that's all the LEDs in their little oval. I can get rid of my color sheet. Now I will go back and do all the electrolytic caps. Again, the circuit board is marked very clearly for where the long lead, the positive lead goes. So this will be relatively straightforward. And there's all the electrolytic caps. So while we've got that sitting, I'm going to put the ICs on. Okay, we have a problem here. We've got two HC164Ns and we don't have the HC86 so I'm double checking all the numbers nope We've only got two HC one six fours. Well, let me see what a HC eighty six is. So one, this one is an OR gate. This is uh, shift registers. So they're not replaceable. I'm going to have to go off camera and see if I've got. An HC86? I don't think I do, but I'll go take a look. Well, I do not have a spare HC 74HC86. So we got the wrong part, and I'm going to have to put the other one on order, but I'll get that on order in a couple of minutes. Right now, we may as well just finish up this side. Now he doesn't have a red stripe mark on here but he does have, for the power connector, he does have cutouts indicating where the slot goes so we'll just rely on that. If that's wrong, well it won't work and the first thing I'll do is change the orientation of this but I gotta go with what I got right now. So I believe that is all the soldering on this board. So we'll go back to this board. And we're going to do, one thing I'm going to do before I do anything else, is I'm going to put these spacers 
on this board. Because I'm going to be putting the front panel on as I solder the, uh, ensure that the switches, jacks, pots, and so on are all aligned correctly. And if I can, I'd like to not take it off again. So I'll just put the spacers on the board now. Now I can ignore it. I mean, I don't have to worry about it for when I'm putting things on. So first thing we'll do is we'll put the pots on. So we'll do the two one megs. That's pot three and pot five. Pot three. Geez, he's not even cut that board really short there. Where's the other one mag? Where's the other one mag? And we've got the 100k. I'm sorry, 500k. I'm misreading that. Pot 2 and pot 4. These uh, these share support lug holes. I really wanted to minimize the width of this unit, so they're doubling up on the support leg holes on these three pots, which is a little annoying. And then we've got the twenty k. Where is it? Why does he not have all the caps? There it is. 20K is pot one. So that's good. And we've got two switches. One's uh, on, off, on. That's not that. It's that one. That's S1. It's in there kind of loosely. And then the other one is at S2. And we'll set this down for a second because I have to take the panel nuts off the jacks. Now we'll get the front panel and slide over here as you can see these pots because they're sharing holes are not really aligned very well. There we go. Yeah, everything went on fine. These are not rubbing. I was a little worried about that, but they are not. Let me get my little clamp. everything together, everything is tight. So I will solder all these connections. And that is all the soldering for this kit. Let's take that back off and we'll put the panel nuts on. Rocket Man knob on, and I'm going to peel the protective paper off it. On like so. Now I'm going to wed the two boards again. Oh, first I'm going to double check all my solder connections before I turn the soldering iron off. Make sure I got them all. 
make sure I haven't shorted or bridged any of them. Nope, they all look good. Okay. All those pins are lined up. Now we can take the screws. For the spacers and put them in. And we're all done except for that chip. And this is what it looks like on the front, the side, the back, the other side, the top, and the bottom. So I will go order that from Mauser right now, and it'll be a day or two before I get it. But you won't notice because it'll just be one camera flick away. It's a day later. I ordered the part from jameco.com and it just came this morning so we can get this done. I also sent a note that night uh, to Synthrotech and told them I'd already ordered the part so don't worry about sending me a replacement. They apologized and sent me a discount code on my next order which I appreciate. Oh and by the way uh, whenever I order a part I don't have like this uh, chip I order 10. Uh, these are 79 cents a piece, so that's, you know, 12 bucks maybe if I did the math right, which I probably didn't. Uh, and it's well worth it to just, this is how you build your stock of parts that you may need as replacements or you might need if you start designing stuff on your own. So let's power this up. Ooh, the LEDs all lit up, didn't they? Okay, so we're getting... 10 volts on the negative plus rail, 13 on the negative 12, uh, 1.94 on the 5, but that doesn't really matter. Now milliamps, okay, this is drawing, wow, this is drawing a lot. Only 6 on the minus 12, nothing on the plus 5. On the plus 12, it's drawing 113, I mean 116. It's a good bit. The peak was 158 when it started up. Probably those LEDs are not helping there. So I've got the trigger plugged in there. Got the out plugged in there. I'm going to turn the rate all the way down, set everything else to mid. Actually, I'm going to turn all the LFOs down. And now the lights went off. I wonder why the light... Oh, it's because the rate went off. Well, I don't know what it went off for. Huh. Well, I don't know what's going on now. Voltage has dropped. Turn the oscillator on. I'm going to turn the sound up, see if we can hear anything. And I'm going to turn the LFO up that I'm using to trigger it. So you can hear it rippling. It's not giving us much of a long tone. Let me switch tones to the bottom one. Take decay out. Actually, I'm going to turn decay up. with the oscillator off. Let me turn this way. Oh, listen to that. That's pretty good. Let me switch tone. Change decay, slow it down, uh, make the decay longer. There it goes, firing off. Let me turn this up a little more.
Turn the oscillator back on. Huh, I don't know what that's giving me. There we go. Sounds kind of neat. Now I'm going to take, uh, get my rate set by my LFO. Now I'm adjusting the LFO for rate. Turning the rate down. So uh, the rate CV does not lock out the rate control, as you can see. I'm going to take rate CV back out. Turn the oscillators back on. That sounds neat. So as you can see, it does a lot of beeps and boops, and that's pretty neat. Uh, I can see how using this would be, could be very interesting in certain scenarios. Putting a good filter after it would make it even more interesting, probably. Now one thing that it doesn't have that I, as I'm messing with it, I wish it did. I wish these LFOs could be set with CV because it'd be, I could do more programming with this. Where this is going to be all kind of guesswork in the studio or in a live situation. And I turn the LFO all the way up so it's constantly triggered. And that's what you get. So that's what it is, what we expected for a video game reminiscent type thing. Uh, and as you saw, it was a pretty straightforward build. It draws more power than I would expect or I would like, and I think that's because of all the LEDs that it's having to light up. But uh, it's a good little unit. I can see uses for it in certain situations. And again, uh, had some good customer service with a little mix-up, and that's always nice. And I hope you enjoyed the video.